why has the exile lasted for so long? Why hasn't Mashiach come yet? Come yet? This is a question that's constantly asked. It's been asked for hundreds of years already. And even though obviously we do not know the exact answer, because only Hashem Himself knows exactly what and how and what might be holding up or the coming of Mashiach. But nevertheless, there are a few general points that our sages have explained and elaborated upon over the um, during the exile. First of all, I mean the simple answer, understanding of exile is that exile is a punishment for sin. So if there's still sin, there's still exile. However, that answer leaves room for many more questions because if so, what is the point of exile? People are continuously sinning. Will exile be God forbid a perpetual state? Hashem promised the Mashiach will come. The Jewish people will be redeemed. They will rebuild the third base Hamikdash. They will, they will return to the land of Israel. So what is the, why is the length of the exile? So one of the basic, basic explanations is that there were different redemptions the Jewish people had. They had the redemption going out of Egypt. They had the redemption from the Babylonian exile after the, after the, the first temple was destroyed. They went into exile into Babylonia for 70 years and they returned. But all these redemptions were not a full-fledged, complete redemption. You know that the future redemption is termed in our sources as Gula Shlema, Gula Hamitis Vashlema, a true and complete redemption, which means two things. First of all, it means that it will be everlasting. And number two is that it will include every single, every single Jew, every single aspect of creation as well. Therefore, the, for example, when the Jewish people left Egypt, in a certain sense, they weren't yet ready for the revelation at Sinai in the ultimate sense, which means that they obviously got ready, they had the revelation, but 40 days later they sinned with the golden calf, which means that they weren't yet ready for the revelation to be fully internalized within their consciousness, within their own minds and hearts. And then they entered Israel and they, they sinned, and the first temple was destroyed, and the second temple was rebuilt, and then that again was destroyed. This all, highlight, <clears throat> this all ha- highlights how the the, the Jewish people were not yet ready for the ultimate state of the future redemption, which as our sages say, that at that point, the glory of Hashem will fill the world, and the Jewish people will be able to behold and learn Taita from Hashem, and they will be able to behold the glory of Hashem, as it says, ayin ayin, eye to eye. the world itself will become a vessel for godliness. So this is a process. The Jewish people, when they left Egypt, so to say, this revelation came upon them from above. They received the Torah. They went into Israel. But the world itself, they themselves, from their perspective of their body and their animal soul, were not yet ready for this revelation. And therefore, the future redemption, yeah, in other words, technically, you could have a quasi-redemption, a half a redemption, an incomplete redemption. But Hashem's goal is that the redemption should be complete. It should be everlasting. It should include every single detail of creation, every single Jew. And therefore, the exile dragged on for so long, because this is a refinement process that, that elevates the world, that makes every single Jew ready for the future redemption. Mashiach would have come a few hundred years ago. There would have been certain Jewish souls that would have been lost. There's stories of great tzaddikim, righteous men, who said that they had the power to bring Mashiach, but they were told from heaven that if they will do so, there will be certain Jewish souls that will forever be lost. They'll never be able to have a rectification. So that is why exile dragged out for some. That's one explanation. And deeper explanation, it's explained that the, that the divine service in the times of exile has a very great advantage. It's done with great self-sacrifice and submission to Hashem's will, despite the fact that we are constant physical obstacles, spiritual obstacles. There's a lot of the Jewish people went through a lot of pogroms and a lot of different things, and also spiritually, we've been uh, there have been a lot of obstacles in serving Hashem. And nevertheless, the Jewish people stick to the Torah mitzvahs. This is a great divine uh, attribute, a very a very lofty state that the Jewish people are able to achieve, specifically in the time of exile. And therefore, Hashem has great joy, has great nachas uh, ruach, has great satisfaction from this from this particular type of divine service, and the Jewish people will, re- will reap immeasurable reward in the future redemption, specifically due to this divine service. And therefore, Hashem, even if the Jewish people haven't sinned, they don't deserve the exile, God forbid, but nevertheless, Hashem prolonged the exile in order for the Jewish people to reach a heightened level of lofty divine service. 
Nevertheless, at this point in history, as all G'dayli Yisrael, as all leaders have, Jewish leaders have explained, we've definitely reached the finish line. And right now, the important thing is that we all have to, every single Jew has to participate in the coming of Mashiach. It's, it's, Mashiach, it's not so much we're waiting for Mashiach, but Mashiach is waiting for us. In order for Mashiach to come, we, he needs that every single person should be conscious, should be seriously looking, looking forward for this, should be wanting this, should be trying to make this part of his life. So at this point, we finished the divine service that was needed in exile. The focus, the purpose is that we have to try to spread the word, try to get, try to shift our attention instead of focusing on our day-to-day problems and on you know different things that are going on. We have to look, focus at the overall goal, the overall end finish line, which is the coming of Mashiach. And we have to try to make sure that each person participates in it. So like this, as I mentioned before, the future redemption has to be all-encompassing. It's not just redeeming the few elite righteous people. It's redeeming every single Jewish person and every single item in the world, every single part of the world. And therefore, we have to make sure that Jews and even non-Jews should be focused on the future redemption, should be involved in the seven Noahide laws, making the world a better place. And through doing this, we should merit the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. Amen.